The Wilhelm Gustloff was pregnant with lost souls conceived of war. They would crowd into her belly and she would give birth to their freedom. But did anyone realize? The ship was christened for a man, Wilhelm Gustloff. My father told me about him. He had been the leader of the Nazi party in Switzerland. He was murdered. The ship was born of death. Ruth Sipetti. This was the MV Wilhelm Gustloff. And this is the good, the bad and the pure evil. So looking at the Wilhelm Gustloff, it was built by Blom and the voice of shipyards. It was about 685 feet and was la launched March 5th, 1937. It was meant to be called Adolf Hitler, but instead was named after the Swiss Nazi party leader, Wilhelm Gustloff. He was assassinated in 1936 by a Jewish medical student. It completed sea trials in 1938 and went on to her new owners. It was a purpose-built cruise ship to give recreational and cultural activities for German workers like concerts, cruises, holidays and gave a prettier picture of the usually cold Third Reich. She made her unofficial maiden voyage March 1938 with Austrians to convince them to vote for the annexation of Austria by Germany. Then March 29th was a second voyage, carrying workers and their families on a three-day cruise. The third voyage was April 1st, 1938. It was to meet a group of ships for a cruise of the North Sea. A storm happened on April 3rd, with winds at 100 kilometers, and the group ended up being split. Meanwhile, a coal freighter called Pegaway left Hamburg April 2nd and was caught in the storm. Cargo and machinery washed off the deck of the Pegaway and it soon lost control as the storm grew stronger. By April 4th, Pegaway was taken on water. Slowly, but still, it was way out in sea, sinking. At 4am, just off the coast of the Netherlands, a SOS was issued. The closest to help was Wilhelm Gustloff. It got to peg away by 6 a.m. Wilhelm launched a lifeboat. It was a 12 crew ore powered lifeboat, but with heavy seas, it couldn't get close enough to rescue. Soon another lifeboat was launched by Wilhelm, this time a motor one, which could handle the seas better. It first helped the first lifeboat and then on to Pegaway. One by one of the 19 men jumped into the choppy sea and were hauled onto the motor lifeboat and then taken back to Wilhelm Gustloff. This was all done by 8 a.m. By then, a Dutch tugboat came but couldn't save the Pegaway and it soon ro rolled and sank. April 8, 1938, Wilhelm departed from Hamburg for England. It stopped off the shore from Tilbury but remained in international waters. The boat then became a floating polling station for any Germans or Austri Austrians in England wanting to vote on the referendum about Germany's unification with Austria. April 10th was Poland Day and 1,172 Germans and 806 Austrians were ferried over to the ship. 1,968 voted for and 10 voted against. Once completed, the Wilhelm Gustloff headed off, getting to Hamburg by April 12th. Her official maiden voyage was a group cruise to the Madeira Islands from April 21st to May 6th, 1938. The second day of this voyage was hit with tragedy when the captain died on the bridge from a heart attack. He'd be replaced by Frederick Peterson, and once the cruise was done, he'd leave. But he did come back to captain the ship's fatal voyage. But before that, 
Wilhelm Gustloff took 80,000 passengers on 60 voyages all around Europe. Then September 1939 to November 1940, Wilhelm Gustloff was a part of the war as a hospital ship, becoming known as the Lazarus Skiff D for this time. On November 20th, 1940, all medical stuff was taken off the ship and it was repainted from the hospital colours of white and green back to the standard grey. Then it was used as a barrack ship for U-boat trainees. It sat at Danzig dock for years. Eventually Wilhelm was back in service for civilians and military as part of Operation Hannibal. So Operation Hannibal was the naval evacuation of German people and troops from Poland and the Baltic states as the Red Army was coming. Wilhelm Gustloff's final voyage was to evacuate these people. The ship said, uh, said it held 6,000 people on board, but this didn't include those not officially recorded. It's believed the number was more 10,000. Passengers were everyday people as well as Gestapo personnel, Nazi officials and their families. The ship was way overcrowded and very stuffy and warm and despite orders, people removed their life jackets to cool down. The ship left on January 30th, 1945 at about half 12 in the afternoon and was accompanied by two torpedo boats and the Hansa, another passenger line. Hansa and a torpedo boat had mechanical issues, so Wilhelm and the other torpedo boat went on. Against military advice, Wilhelm went into deep water, which was known to be cleared of mines. Big open waters, no mines, already sounds unnerving. Then a weird radio message came, warning of a German minesweeper convoy. To avoid a crash, Wilhelm's red and green navigation lights were turned on. This though had them now very easy to be spotted in the dark. Soon it was spotted by the Soviet submarine S-13. The escorting torpedo boat submarine sonar had stopped working as did the anti-aircraft guns, so they were in trouble, unable to defend themselves. The Soviet submarine followed Wilhelm, stalking it at their starboard side for two hours. Then it surfaced and steered around to the stern. At about 9pm, the Soviets launched torpedoes, and these torpedoes had names. There were four torpedoes. For the motherland, for Leningrad, for the Soviet people, and the last one which jammed and had to be dismantled was called for Stalin. The tree that did fire hit Wilhelm's Gustloff's port side. The first hit the bow, causing the watertight doors to seal. This is where off Trudy's uh, crew slept. The second hit where the woman's naval auxiliary was which was where the ship's drained swimming pool was. The force of the hit had the tiles flying like daggers, causing heavy casualties. Only three of the 373 women in the area lived. The third hit the engine room, cutting off all power and communications. According to accounts, only nine lifeboats could be lowered. Those lowered high starboard side crashed into ships tilting side, destroying many lifeboats. Many deaths were from the torpedoes or drowning. Some deaths happened in the panics getting to the decks and some died taking their chances in the freezing Baltic Sea. Less than 40 minutes after the hit, Wilhelm Gustloff was on her side. The figures of 9,343 men, women and children have been given as the death toll. With this, Wilhelm Gustloff remains by far the largest loss of life resulting from the sinking of a single vessel in maritime history. The night of February 9th to 10th, just 11 days from, uh, from Wilhelm Gustloff's sinking, 
the Soviet S-13 sank another German ship, killing 4,500 people. And that is the story of M.V. Wilhelm Gustloff. Hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, please get subscribed. And ring the hell out of that bell. Join me next time for the story of Rose West, a serial killer who worked with her serial killer husband, Fred West. They tortured and killed at least nine women from 1973 until 1987. Rose also killed her stepdaughter, Charmaine. Rose is currently in HM Prison, Newhall. But what made her do such awful things? Until then, this was the good, the bad and the pure evil.